welcome to Garden Planning with a Biodynamic Moon Calendar for September 2023. My name is Katrina, my business is Blue Borage, and I help people, all sorts of gardeners, home gardeners, communities, spaces, schools, workplaces, um, make exquisite compost using biodynamic methods. And then once you've made that compost, you want to use it to grow food and flowers. So I help people you make sense of the biodynamic moon calendar this is just a very brief introduction um i've got a subscription program and there is a free download here that will help you plan out what's most relevant in your space this month so you can then go look for the um appropriate dates in the calendar and not get too bogged down by all the information because there's so much to take in. So under this video, you'll find a link to download this free planning tool. Um, use it each month, handwrite it. It's, it's really just the concept of um, um, downloading what you want to do for the month and then going and finding the data that you need. So, um, key dates, sorry about the typo there, that should say key dates for September, um, full moon on the 29th, new moon on the 15th, moon opposite Saturn on Wednesday the 13th, and then I've got the descending periods, ascending, back to descending, and then the nodes. So this is... And I don't know how to shift that, um, my face out of the way. So the nodes are uh, Sunday the 3rd and then Monday the 18th of September. Sorry, that's blocked. Uh, all that information is on a handy printable PDF, which um, is available inside the subscription program. So if that's all you need, then two and a half minutes done you can click out and go plan your gardening for the month if you want to stick around and see what I'm up to for September then um, let's get into it I have four gardens where I work most of the time I'm uh, in, at the soil farm here in Whangarata halfway between Turco and Pocono pretty much exactly halfway between Auckland and Hamilton and all these four photos were taken the very first day I took on these gardens so it was literally just the paddock uh, top right is the museum pollinator garden uh, where as far as I know we have stopped spraying glyphosate and I'm just itching for the weather to warm up and we can fill this space with dahlias. I reckon I've got probably 200 tubers ready to go into the crown. It's going to be stunning. Then bottom left is Whangarata Community Hall. And um, I took the winter off the Wednesday classes, but I popped up there uh, in the weekend. I'm recording this on Sunday, the 20th of August. So yesterday I was up there checking on my Majira vine compost piles and they've all condensed down and it's like they're going, please turn us, please turn us, please turn us, that I will um, be up there in September. And then finally the Shada Center Food Forest the fruit trees all got the uh, winter biodynamic tree paste preparation. I was so happy to get that out. And um, what's the next plan? On we go. Uh, so plans for the month. Um, <coughs> as on the next slide, but uh, these are the photos recently that I've taken. So here at the soil farm, it's no longer a paddock. There is a um, vehicle, emergency vehicle access to this grass strip, but otherwise it's all garden beds. So happy with how the soil is, and I can literally start planting anything I want. Museum pollinator garden, we got a CBP pit in, I think that was July, filled it early August from memory. And now it's time to um, bundle up all the weeds, make hot compost, and get more flowers in. So Whangarata Community Hall is um, time to 
turn than the Girovine compost and I would love some help with that. And then Shada Center Food Forest is um, compost. So much of my work is compost. <coughs> so on the soil farm, it has got warm enough that I need to check baby seedlings every single day, make lots and lots of potting mix. And a new project here is to start planting up a new, um, well, we're calling it the flower farm. It's a paddock that up until now we've called the, the new orchard or the orchard extension. Um, but Medine wants to fill it with dahlias and zinnias and it's going to be stunning. Then the museum pollinator garden is one hot compost pile um, and then sow some seeds. I might host a seed swap. So if you're interested in that, head to my Humanitics event page and you'll see all the workshops coming up. Whangarata Community Hall. Um, turn those five piles into one, layering in fresh green material. And what's under that circle is um, find global allies using biodynamics in public spaces. I need um, I need some case studies, I need some evidence, I need some support. So um, that's my research task. And then at Shara, um, again, one hot compost pile is enough for the month. And um, I'd like to develop more walkways just to make it safe on the um, steep slope, get some spring color in and maybe host a 500 stir. Um, I've got a feeling that the spring equinox might be a fun time to do that, but um, I'll see if I get rid of this cold, see what the weather does, and um, see if there are any bookings at Sharda. So, looking at the calendar for September, I've got four events popped in. So, the first week where it's this descending period. <coughs> This is when I try and make my hot compost. Sometimes I end up making compost in the ascending period, but um, on the whole, it's better to do it in the descending when the earth is kind of breathing inwards, the energy is going downwards. Uh, in the ascending period, I've jotted in here a seed swap, but that's a tentative seed swap. And then down the bottom, with, uh, I think that's the Equinox, is a 500 star. Um, and that will go into my um, second Instagram account where I promote all the um, activities that involve cow manure. Send me a message if you want to get onto the, um, onto the list for that. And then on the left, planting flowers at Shada is, um, just because I'm only at Shada, it used to be every week, but it's kind of dropped back through the winter. Like if I'm only there once a month, I can't water plants every week that I really want to get flowers in in a descending period where they're going to have a better chance at thriving. Um, so that's it. The month looks pretty simple. Um, what's not on the list is um, all the other tasks here at the soil farm that keep me busy every day so i hope that has simplified the biodynamic calendar for you if you would like help planning your garden tasks please get in touch with me katrina at blueborage.co.nz otherwise i will see you next month